Choosing the right state management is always a headache for developers. But today, I'm going to introduce you to an state management solution that not only fits all your projects, but also helps you write clean and maintainable code. Right. In this video, we will explore block, new theory. You will learn practical tips, code examples, and also build complete apps using block. But what is block? Block or business logic component is a state management solution and design patterns in Flutter that brings order to the chaos, ensuring clean separation of concerns and efficient handling of your application's business logic. So how does it work? Block uses Dart streams underneath the hood to communicate between UI and business logic. A stream is a sequence of asynchronous data. It's like a pipe through which data can flow over time. Block uses streams to send events to block and also emit new states that UI can listen to and update accordingly. The way block works is that when you perform an action in the UI, you can send an event to the block. The block processes your event and then sends a new state to the UI, telling the UI to rebuild. So what's the difference between a block and a qubit and how to use each one? The main difference between block and qubit is that qubit receives a function that is not a stream, while block receives a stream of events. So qubit is best suited for smaller applications when you don't have many different states. In this video, we will first explore qubit and build a counterexample with it. Then we will switch to block and see how we can build the same application with block. And lastly, we will dive deeper into block by building a complete to-do app that has different states. Let's start our counter app. First, we need to build the UI. Inside the lib folder, create the counter screen. Create counter screen as an stateless widget. Inside the scaffold, put an app bar, and inside the body, put a center widget with a text of zero. Inside floating action button, put a row with two floating action buttons side by side, one for incrementing and one for decrementing our counter. Return the counter view inside your material app, and now the UI works perfectly. Next, we need to define our counter qubit class. Define it inside a qubit folder. To work with qubits, you need to have flutter block package installed in your pubspec.yaml. First, import flutter block and create counter qubit class. You also need to extend a qubit of type integer because our counter value is an integer. Then define a super constructor and put initial state in this case zero. This is the state our application shows every time you open the app. The first method we define is increment. This method adds one to the state and emits a new state meaning that it notifies the UI that our counter value has changed. Next, define decrement method to decrement the counter value and emit a new state. Now that counter qubit is complete, it's time to provide it to our app. Go to main.dart and wrap our material app with a block provider. And inside the create method, just return your counter qubit. Also make sure to import flutter block library. What it does is that it provides an instance of our qubit class to material app and all of its descendants. In this case, we provide our counter qubit to the entire application, as material app is our topmost widget in the widget tree. This enables us to access our counter qubit class anywhere using our context. Now let's open up counter screen. First, replace the constant zero with our counter value that we get from block. For that, wrap text widget with a block builder and provide counter qubit to it. A block builder is a widget that listens to a block or qubit and updates the UI when the state has changed. Now replace the constant zero with your state that is your counter value. Next, we need to use methods for incrementing and decrementing our counter inside our floating action buttons. As I said earlier, you need to use context to access your methods. Make sure to also use name of the qubit you're using. This way you can call the methods you have defined inside qubit class directly to update the counter value. It will also automatically update the UI when the counter value is changed. Now let's also do the same for decrement method. Beautiful. Now how do we start the application? And it works as expected. So it was all about building a counter app with qubit. Next, we will learn how to build the same app using block. Now let's modify our counter example to use block in order to get familiar with basics of block and how block works. Every block is composed of three parts. There is a state, event, and the block itself. The state part keeps track of your application state, be it a simple counter variable, login state, or even your to-do list. Events are the methods you invoke by pressing buttons in the UI. And block is the central part of your project that handles the events and emits new state. To start this application, make sure to add a creatable package to your powerspec.yaml file. So let's build a file for our block inside which we define all our three files. 
let's start working from our counter state. If you remember our qubit example, we just had to specify its type, but inside block, we need to explicitly create a state class. And inside that class, we need to define our counter variable as integer. This is the state that our block holds. Let's also create a constructor for our class and override the props method. As you can see, our class extends equitable. Equitable is a package that compares to an instance of a class using their properties. For example, when I change my counter value from 0 to 1, the only reason the block updates the UI is because I send a new state to the block with the new counter variable. Block compares both the states using their variables and realizes that the state has changed, so it updates the UI. So if the block fails to di differentiate between all the new state, it won't update the UI. So for the block to know the difference between all the new state, we need to override the props getter and put all the fields in the list it returns. Now that we defined our class successfully, let's create our events. An event in block is something that happens in the app that changes the state of your app, like a button press or refreshing the page. In this app, our events are incrementing and decrementing our counter. Start by defining an abstract counter event class. Define an increment event that extends your counter event. Also define a decrement event. Now that our events are in place, let's create our block. Create a counter block class that extends a block of type counter event and counter state. Inside the super constructor, provide initial state of our block. This is an instance of our, our block state with counter variable set to zero. The first event that we handle is increment event. This is the syntax for handling an event in block. And just like qubit, we emit a new state that, that is our counter state and increment our counter by one. Next, let's do the same dec for decrement event. And this time, we decrement one from our counter and emit a new state. Save and exec the file. Now we need to go to main.dot to provide our block to the application. And as you can see, we already provide a qubit to our block. We can either list block providers on top of each other or use a multi-block provider. I use a multi-block provider and provide my block in the list of providers. Now we can access our block in the context of our application. Next, go to counter screen and make our block builder to use our counter block instead of counter qubit. Inside the text widget, return state.counter value because this time our state is not a variable, but a class. And this class has a property of counter value. Inside our floating action buttons, start using counter block instead of counter qubits. Using block, you can't access functions directly, but you rather need to send an event to the block. The block handles the event and updates the UI. Make sure to do the same for decrement button and also run the app. Now, as you can see, you can easily increment and decrement the counter. This was all about building our counter app. Next, we would build a complete to-do app using block and perform all crude operations. Plus, we would also do some filtering with block. <laughs> to get started with the to-do app, get the starter code from GitHub repository. There is a branch called the starter code and it contains all the files for application UI and also model. Now let's create our block, but this time instead of creating all the files manually, I generate them. Right click on the lib folder and press new block and then type the name of your block and press enter. To be able to generate block like this, you need a block extension by Felix Angelop in VS Code. Android Studio might also provide an alternative plugin. By default, we have a generic to-dos class that is inherited by our real states. Inside the to-dos state, add a list of to-dos as a parameter and also add it to the constructor. Also, add your to-dos inside props method. This way the block considers them when comparing two states. I also define a placeholder getter for getting filtered to-dos. In this app, we have two different states. The first state that we have is initial state. This is the state of our application when we open it. Inside this state, we set list of to-dos to empty. Next, define a filtered enum with three properties for filtering our to-dos. The second state that we have is completed state. This is set choose when we have successfully received all our to-dos. Also get a list of to-dos and pass it to your super constructor. Define a getter for filtering to-dos. This getter will return a filtered list of to-dos based on the selected filter. And lastly, pass our parameters to props method. Let's start by defining various events for our application. The first event we will create is for adding a to-do. This particular event will accept a list of to-dos as a parameter. Next, we define an event for deleting a to-do. This event requires the ID of the to-do you want to delete. We also need to define events for updating and marking a to-do as complete. The last set of events we define 
are dedicated to filtering our to-dos. These events enable us to get all to-dos, active to-dos or only completed to-dos. With our events now created, let's also handle them inside Block. As mentioned earlier, Block is the central component in our architecture. It receives events from the UI, such as button presses. Subsequently, it interacts with the data layer to process the data, fulfill necessary requests, and also emit a new state. Start by handling add to do event. Inside it, create a new list by copying the to dos from the current state, and then append the new to do to the list. And lastly, emit to dos loaded state and pass new to dos. It is all we need to do inside the block. Now let's handle the logic in the application. If you click on add to do button, you will navigate to add to do screen that is already built for you. Currently, add to do button only navigates you out of the screen. So when you press on add to do button, First create a to-do and fill its arguments. Next add to-do to our state using to-do's block. But if you try to add a to-do for now, you will get an error because we haven't provided our to-do's block to our app. Let's wrap our material up with to-do's block. Perfect. Now we need to display to-do's in the UI. For that, go to to-do's screen. Currently, our UI only returns an empty list. To access list of to-do's inside UI, we use a block builder. Inside the block builder property, Get a list of filtered to dos. So if to dos exist, return to dos list widget. Otherwise, return a text saying that there are new to dos and save the changes. Now let's add a new to do and the to do is added successfully. Next, let's also learn how to update the to do. Start by setting up an event handler for update to dos event. Next, generate a new list of to dos by mapping through the existing state of to dos. For each to do, Check if it matches the one we need to update by checking its ID. If true, return the updated to-do, otherwise keep the to-do unchanged. This will generate a new list of to-dos out of our state.todos and also update our specific to-do. Lastly, emit a to-dos completed state and pass the new to-dos. And also, don't forget to turn new to-do into a list. Inside the UI, if you click on the to-do list style, it will take you to add to-do screen and pre-populate the title text field and also change the add task button to update task. Let's also implement the logic inside the add to do screen. Inside the add to do button, check if you are inside editing mode. We determine this by verifying if we receive a to do from our constructor. If we are in editing mode, create a duplicate of our to do and update this title. To achieve this, use the copy with method defined within our model. The job of copy with is to return a copy of our to do while updating its properties such as title or is loading. Here we update to do's title and then call update to do event. And if you're not in editing mode, simply add the to do like before. Now how to restart the app. Create a new to do since all our to do's are wiped out. So now let's also attempt to update our to do. And as you can see, this is updated successfully. Now that you have mastered updating to do's, Let's also learn deleting to-dos. Start by creating an event handler for delete to-do event. Once again, generate a new list of to-dos by mapping through the existing state.todos. For each to-do, check if it is the one we want to delete by comparing its ID. If it is, simply escape it in the new list. That's how we delete a to-do. Emit a to-dos completed state, passing the new to-dos list. Open up to-do list style, find the delete to-do button, and call delete to-do event inside it also passing todo.id. Let's rename our task parameter to todo. Now how to restart the app to make everything work. Time to put it to test. Add a todo, hit delete, works like a charm. The next event we will handle is marking a todo as complete. Start by creating an event handler for it. This is very similar to updating a todo. Generate a new list of todos by mapping state.todos. For each todo, check if it is the one we want to mark as complete. If true, return a copy of it, changing its is completed state. Otherwise, keep the to-do unchanged. Now emit the to-do's completed state. And also don't forget to turn new to-do into a list. For the next step, navigate to to-do's list style. Find the checkbox. And inside its unchanged property, call our event, passing id and is completed. Now add two to-do's for testing. And it works as expected. Let's wrap up our block with a couple of events for filtering our to-dos. These events do a simple job. They emit a to-dos completed state and pass a filter. The first handler gives you all the to-dos. The second one hands you just the active to-dos. 
the ones that you still need completing. The last hundred serves up only the completed to-dos. And if you take a look at the completed state, you see the logic for filtering. Now let's head over to filter to-dos pop-up button. And this is the button you can see on the top right corner of the screen. Inside the, the show all button, I send a get all to-dos event. Similarly, do the same exact thing for show active and show completed buttons. How to restart the app, add a couple of to-dos and test to see how it works. And as you can see, the filtering logic works correctly. So that wraps up our tutorials for today. In this video, we explored the ins and outs of Block and Qubit. Now all that remains is to create more projects with Block in order to get confident. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe and smash that like button. If you want more tutorials about the state management, just leave a comment down below and see you in the next one.